I think what we should do is each of you uh, take it. Take each of the drug and tell us what, how it can be given. Arenumab. Well, arenumab I like to use at the 140 milligram dose rather than the 70 milligram dose. I think across all the different endpoints that were done in all the trials, there is a preference for the 140 milligram compared to the 70. I certainly agree with you that you need to do this long term. That in the chronic migraine trial, the pivotal trial, it was only a three month trial. But in clinical practice, it certainly needs to be used for much longer than that. And I favor the six month trial period. I think, if I'm not mistaken, that 70 milligrams and 140 milligrams cost the same. Is that not correct? The price is the same. Yeah. And that's and we important. Now, we now have a, a 140 milligram yeah. auto injector. Yeah. which has just been released, That's and so correct. we no longer have to do the two injections of Good. 70 milligram. Fremantinum. Okay, so a Jovi comes in 225 milligram pre-filled syringes. At this point, it does not come in an auto-injector, but they're working on that. Um, and so it's given subcutaneously either 225 milligrams a month or three doses, 675 milligrams every three months. Um, and I think a lot of people are starting their patients on monthly dosing. I think most patients also prefer to start with monthly dosing. It's a little intimidating to think about having something in your system for three months and you don't know what's gonna happen with it. Um, and then uh, transitioning those patients who prefer every you know, quarterly dosing over to quarterly dosing using the three injections at once. I tend to give everybody quarterly dosing because if you look at the benefit of only having it every three months, and the fact by suddenly giving a both to reach uh, steady state levels quicker, theoretically the chance they will improve faster. They actually did a study of patients who were in the open label extension um, and asked them if they preferred quarterly dosing or monthly dosing, and people overwhelmingly wanted quarterly dosing, but I think you have to keep in mind that the people in the study we're getting dosed every month with three injections in order to I'm, I'm maintain the blinding. <laughs> I'm not disagreeing about the blinding. So under those circumstances, I think I would have preferred quarterly dosing as well. There is a comforting aspect of uh, Fremonizumab that was presented at this meeting in which there was a pretty systematic analysis of whether there was any wearing off in the quarterly dosing. And there, there is, does not, not to appear be. to be. Yeah. No. yeah, it was very encouraging. Now, that's, that's the important point. The other advantage is if you have samples in your office, if you give them three injections, you've got three months to get pre-approval. If you give them one injection, you may not get approval before the next dose is there. So I think from a practical point of view, that's what I do. It's also reassuring to know that in very early studies, it was even given at 900 milligrams monthly yeah. and established as pretty safe. So that's something you can also tell patients who may have any hesitation about taking yeah. three shots at once. One, one last point about fremonizumab that it's worth pointing out in terms of the early studies. In the early studies of fremonizumab, in the chronic migraine studies, they actually studied patients like we see. They studied patients who had continuous headache. They studied patients who had had multiple preventive medicine failures and who were on prevention at the time. And it worked equally well as what subsequently turned that, out with less severe patients in the phase three trials. But we really have study, good evidence on There's a study that's going to be published on looking at recruiting patients who failed multiple drugs with fremanzumab. And that data should be presented soon. So galcanizumab would be me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that one is the simplest because there's really only one way to give it and what's unique is that it was studied uh, and is administered with a loading dose up front. So 240 milligrams for the first dose, then 120 milligrams monthly thereafter. So there's no decisions to be made once you pick that drug about how to dose it. You just do it one way. Uh, the, the idea of having a loading dose means that you achieve steady state at one month as opposed to five to six months or five half-lives. That may or may not translate to sooner um, establishment of efficacy and longer duration of benefit. We don't really know. Um, but at least it, it keeps things simple. And it, is, uh, it isn't an auto-injector. Uh, pretty easy to use one as well. It's the same one. Do you have a syringe now, too? Yeah, Trulicity. They also have a syringe. Yeah. 
And one other point about galcanezumab uh, that's exciting and was presented at this meeting is that 300 milligrams of galcanezumab, not the dose that we're talking, which was 240 load and 120 monthly, 300 milligrams of galcanezumab was effective in preventing cluster. episodic cluster headache and, and um, has been submitted to the FDA for that indication. And the FDA agreed to an expedited review. And I would assume that galcanezumab uh, as a preventive medicine for episodic cluster headache will be approved uh, this year. We talked about the injectable formulations. I think it's important we talk about the other one in development that's given intravenously. Can you tell us a little bit about that still? The fourth one is eptinezumab, um, and um, it has been submitted to the FDA for, pre again, for prevention of migraine. As Deb pointed out, it's migraine. It's episodic and chronic. Uh, and eptinezumab, uh, assuming that the, the uh, FDA approves what was, um, what was submitted, will be available as a 100 milligram or a 300 milligram infusion that we would administer in an infusion suite quarterly for patients. It has a, an interesting uh, feature, which is that it very clearly shows benefit with, uh, within the first 24 hours after infusion, which would make sense because we know from GPANTS that if you block the CGRP receptor acutely, you can terminate a migraine. So in this case, uh, you're taking out all the CGRP uh, virtually instantly with an infusion, and so uh, within the first 24 hours, patients um, there's a 50% drop in the yep. likelihood of a migraine. I think the important point is the fact it is not the antibody that's different, but the route of administration Correct. is different.